Now, I'm not a scholar or an academic. I'm a writer of fiction. And being a writer is like being a window cleaner in a house or even a castle where the windows are permanently covered in grime and dirt. It is the writer's job to clean even just one of those windows and reveal a view of the world that has not been seen before. But tonight I'm going to throw some ideas around. You may or you may not agree with them, but it's a necessary part of the writer's job to provoke argument and debate, or generally just to stir up trouble. From Ovid in ancient Rome through to Salman Rushdie, um, writers can ruffle feathers. Much of our literature spring, springs from our social conditions and lived experience and what we see around us, but not all of it. And I want to talk about the variety of influences that constitute the landscape of the imagination, those interior landscapes which writers draw on for their work. All writers will have been shaped by the quality of their childhood, the land, the scenery, their upbringing, a country's history, common beliefs, and attitudes. However, there are other sources of inspiration, and I want to argue that through literature and the imagination, we can gain a degree of freedom from our personal history. We need not be bound by it. Of course, writers can write realistically. We can do historical research and understand how we are all affected by gender, race, class, or our roots. But these are categories that can belong as much to the sociologist and the historian or the journalist as to the creator of literature. And the legacy of realism means that literature is sometimes reduced to sociology or history. And the imagination can become constrained by those disciplines instead of being used, uh, using them as a springboard. That's not to belittle the importance of realism and its ability to show the conditions and circumstances of life as it is lived. Writers have to start somewhere, and they usually start with concrete reality and what they see around them, the humanity and the comedy of it. Um, the distinguished Guyanese novelist Roy Heath stuck firmly to the social realist tradition. He believed that the novelist has a responsibility to depict the conditions that shape the lives of those around him. While it is important to be grounded, it is also important not to be restricted by those groundings. It is important to be free to write whatever you want, wherever it is set, and whomsoever are the characters. Personal experience is an inextricable part of anyone's attempt at literature, but it is not necessarily the whole. Sociology is useful, but never under underestimate the imagination as a form of flight, exploration, and above all, illumination. And remember that writers can be prophetic too. They can give warning. However, let me give an example of some other sources of inspiration. One of the greatest Caribbean South American writers, the Nobel Prize winning novelist Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who describes himself as a Caribbean man through and through, says that he was first inspired to write not by his background or his surroundings or his native land or his childhood, but by a novel from a completely different part of the world. The novel was Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, written in what was then Czechoslovakia. And Marquez said, when I read Metamorphosis, I realized I could be a writer. In a long interview, he goes on to say that on reading Kafka, he understood that it was possible to write beyond the constraints of reality, race, gender, or nationality, and to write from the point of view of a man who was turned into an insect. He understood then that in literature, everything is possible. <clears throat> Even more surprising to me, um, Marquez says that he found it difficult to describe his own Caribbean landscape and that he learned how to do so by reading the works of Graham Greene, the British writer, who had only visited the region a few times. Graham Greene, he says, taught me to decipher the tropics. It can be extremely difficult 
when you know a landscape too well to separate out the essential elements. It's so familiar, you don't know where to start. Graham Greene, a relative stranger to the Caribbean, solved this literary problem for me. Of course, Marquez's writing is also imbued with his own childhood in Colombia, his family, the politics, the atmospheres of the times, but as he clearly admits, these were not the only realities for him. Writers are as much influenced by other writers as they are by their own background. Thirdly, and equally startling, Marquez said that reading the work of Virginia Woolf completely transformed his sense of time and that one passage from her novel, Mrs. Dalloway, made him understand the time span he could use in his famous novel, A Hundred Years of Solitude. He states, I would be quite a different author from the one I am today if I hadn't read that passage from Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. And so here we have an example of a self-proclaimed Caribbean man who drew on his own environment, certainly, but also looked far beyond it for inspiration. The point I'm trying to make here is that there is another landscape which mingles with, with our native landscape, and that is the landscape provided by writers and literature, myths and stories from other regions. This literary landscape, from fairy tales to Tolstoy, is also woven into our memories and our experience. We have to look no further than Derek Walcott and his reworking of Homer from ancient Greece uh, to see a skillful fusion of the history of St. Lucia and the literature of ancient Greece. Sometimes, characters or descriptions in fiction remain more vivid to us than our real life memories. As well as what we have seen with our own eyes, we have seen life through the eyes of other writers, and that can shape how we see and cause us to look at life differently. And so, we live a multi-layered existence. There is what we've experienced, what we ourselves fantasize about or imagine, and what we have read. And also in literature, there are dreams, visions. There are alterations to the map of time. The past in fiction is changeable and not fixed. It can be reinvented. Literature can cast a new light on areas of the past that have stayed in the shadow. Literature can play with reality and still illuminate the truth. A good writer makes use of all this and is instinctively international. Even when writing about local environment, even writing from a prison cell, the writer has a sense of reaching out to the rest of humanity. A writer will take inspiration from anything or anywhere that feeds his work. This is not to dismiss our own local experience, but merely to say that it can be augmented and enriched. I remember going through a stage when I thought it ridiculous that pupils in this region should learn English poems about daffodils and snow, which was beyond their experience. I've changed my mind. Now I think that people should be exposed to literature, especially great literature from any country, provided and conditional upon the fact that such work is not imposed to the exclusion or suppression of local indigenous writing and literature, as long as it is considered on an equal basis. Because literature can be a form of travelling to other countries and to other periods of time. It extends our horizons and experience, and it's cheaper and saves you the airfare.